Really happy to be with Mira again. Uh, I have interviewed her before, just a few months ago, actually. You can watch that uh, on my channel as well. Uh, Mira is a member of my uh, ABC client group and also a helper in the group. So um, someone who is being supportive of others as well. And uh, Mira, I just love to talk with you. And every time we do, I, I feel like I learn something. And I think those who are watching will We'll get some inspiration uh, for their entrepreneurial journey and we'll, we'll learn something about it. Um, we only have a short time as always, <laughs> but there's so much we can talk about. Um, if it's okay, I want to start with the thing we were, we were just starting sure. before we started recording, which is I was remarking about how, you know, um, yeah, like I just noticed Mira, you're able to accomplish so much in your business and not surprisingly the results show for it and i was we were remarking about how there is something about how we are probably um we we do more as solopreneurs than most solopreneurs do and you can reflect on why you think that is i want to hear it my my noticing is that it's not that people aren't like somehow we're smarter. Definitely. Like I, I feel whenever I work with my clients, I mean, and students in my courses, I regularly feel that they're smarter than me. Like, like I, I'll, I'll, I'll say, I'll do exercise. Like, all right, everyone, let's take, you know, five minutes now to like write something, please chat it in there. And I'm like trying to do the exercise along, along with that. But you're <laughs> furiously scrolling notes from what they're saying. <laughs> I know. I'm, no, I'm just like writing. I'm like, I can write like three sentences. And then I watch them like paragraphs. I'm like, how are you able to write all that in five minutes? So I really do feel like my students are, are all smarter than me. And yet you and I have been able to accomplish a lot more than most people, you know, in our own fields. And I think it's because, well, we... We, we sure we work hard, but lots of people work hard. We work long hours, but lots of people do as well. We take we take big breaks, but we are also able to bring our focus in uh, maybe a bit more better than others. But I I'll stop there. And there's two things I want you to say. First of all, for the audience who don't know you yet, maybe you can just tell us a little bit about what you do. You know, give your give us your intro, and then go into why do you think you why are you able to accomplish or do more than many of the people that you've, you know, that, that, you know, well, they're kind of linked. So I'm Mira. Hi everyone that hasn't met me in George's audience. And thank you, George. It's a delight to be with you as always and chat. And um, I was enjoying just watching you starting to philosophize into that question and <laughs> contemplate. I was like, yeah. Oh, just go for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I am a resilience and embodiment coach. So I teach people how to understand. So here's the difference in what I teach because those words get thrown a lot around a lot. But I teach people how to understand cognitively the workings of their nervous system, how to feel it, feel what energy and nervous system energy feels like and how to, by linking those two things together, how to have conscious influence over it. When we can do that, we start ending the cycles of what people term, which I don't love this term, self-sabotage but we start ending the cycles of like I thought I knew better why I can't I get through that thing that pattern that da, da 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 and we get to have in answer to your question which we'll get to we get to have more energy more momentum more resilience in our day-to-day -day life work relationships etc so that's what I teach people how to do and that is what I practice. So there's a few things. I gave you the deep spiritual answer to, you know, why I think maybe. Before we started uh, recording, I don't yeah, know if you want to share that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So there's there's sort of two levels to it. I think one, like in recent years, because I would put myself in that category previously, I had a lot of energy, sure, but I didn't, I didn't accomplish things in the same way that I now can. And the way that I now can is because of what I just explained to you, what I teach, what I practice that you've seen, you know, I won't go into it because we went into it our last thing, but the whole launch a business and lose all your social media, which happened to me at the beginning, you know, was my moment right at the start to put into practice these teachings, the resilience teachings. And that has been, that has just continued on. 
So that's that capacity to be with instead of falling down in an emotional heap, which I joke, entrepreneurship, if you're talking about your clients and the people we come into contact with, it's a lot of entrepreneurs. And I joke, but this is the PhD program in uncertainty. It is the absolute, you want to just be face-to-face with the raw truth that nothing is predictable and nothing is certain, run a business. You'll just get that visceral experience every day. Working with the nervous system, working with resilience means learning to influence the systems in the body that respond to uncertainty with fear. That's what we're programmed to do on a biological level. That's one part. That's the kind of day-to-day part. And then the other part, because we were talking about how, <clears throat> you know, and with great compassion, it's really hard. It sucks coming from a trauma background. It sucks being stuck in these patterns and not feeling like you can get any momentum and not understanding why. And if you don't come across the right teachers, you can be stuck there for a long time. You can think it's your fault. There's a, you know, I have clients, we have these conversations. And, but when you do find the right teachings and the right way out, my experience that I said to you earlier off camera, off, off recording was that, again, having a trauma background brings you face to face with the very visceral truth of the shortness of life, the uncertainty of life and of dying. So uh, for me, that's been it. I have been aware of, of suffering, it's very Buddhist, but from a very young age, which taught me how precious it all is. So I literally feel it's a bit of a gross image, but I just want to suck everything out of life. <laughs> I just want to suck the juice out because I know it could be gone like that. So that's, that's how, that's how I'm energized. And then the way I manage that energy on a day-to-day basis in terms of having a trauma background or emotional dysregulation is through the practices of, of self-regulation. I love that. Wow. It's so true and yet hard to remember uh, the preciousness. Um, mm-hmm. It's like a, it is a spiritual practice and one that, you know, is, would be good to do on a regular basis, perhaps every day, <laughs> sometimes even multiple times a day. Yeah, I, um, you know, I, 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 one of the things I, you know, you might know, I, I love listening to like near death experience stories, NDEs, and yeah, yeah, that reminds me regularly. Oh my gosh, this is so short, this this life, and no, so thank you for um, kind of giving us the metaphysical energy uh, foundation, which is we are here for a short time. Let's make the most of it. May that give us the inspiration, and then also. Well, what do we do to bounce back? Because mm-hmm. the energy is taken away immediately when you know you, you you post your your heart and soul on social media and nobody's nobody likes it. You know? yeah. <laughs> or you 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 create this offer, this program, this service that you are so passionate to help people with and nobody buys. Right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so you are helping people like that and many other types, even non-entrepreneurial types, you're helping them bounce back to be resilient and to continue having the energy to keep going. So maybe, maybe talk about that a bit because, well, you started, you started well, saying yeah. this, the master class in uncertainty. Tell us about resilience and how you, how you bounce back a bit. Well, I think there's a really key piece here, which I don't know how often you still talk about money, George, cause I know it's a sort of conscious money stuff is a, um, important topic for you and I think it's an important people can get caught up in the glamour of entrepreneurship and and sort of forget to talk about the nuts and bolts of what does that really mean you know on a day-to-day practical level and I think part of the uncertainty that's really hard is the financial one because in our current capitalist culture that's resources that's survival so if you're dealing with uncertainty on that level on a day-to-day basis, it's pretty deeply difficult, right? Difficult in the nervous system. So part of what also, it's about balance. So part of the resilience is constantly checking what level of stress is coming in and what level of resourcing do I have to meet that level of stress? And those, both those things will go up and down. So one of the 
re- sim- simple, practical resourcing things is to potentially have a stable part-time job or have some savings or learn to man- manage your money well so you're not having to regulate through the fear of survival at that level. So that's a resource that you can give yourself that can then allow the other stresses that like the example that you just gave, okay, I've launched something beautiful and no one's bought it. I can still pay my rent next month, you know? So you can start to detach those two experiences from each other. That will give a little bit more entrepreneurial resilience. Then the emotional stuff that comes up, I'm not in total true survival fear because I can pay my rent, but I'm in attachment distress because I've been majorly rejected by my community or that's my perception if there are no likes and ticks. How do I regulate through something like that? Then there are the practices, right? So we we return, for me, I always work on a physiological level. So it's literally not trying to tell myself how I should feel, but giving my body a felt sense of safety and security. So there are lots of physiological tools, simple stuff, hugging yourself, you know, um, stroking the stroking your body in a particular way, movement, breath, sound, and everyone has their different sets that work better for them. Stretching, I know you love your energy reboot. So there are certain things we can do that allow the body to return to safety, and that can often be enough because once we are re-regulated, our perceptions will change on their own. The way that we see the situation we have access once again to our logical brain to our rational brain to our prefrontal cortex and we can then begin to go have the thoughts that people might have told us 20 minutes before that we couldn't hear like it's not that bad you know it's okay but how how can we do something useful with this blah 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 we can then begin to think like that at that point brilliant this yeah so true i mean but both of what you said about uh, you know, making sure you're not in physical danger. <laughs> you know, first of all, uh, it's hard to be spiritual, practice self-regulation when you've placed yourself in a financially perilous situation. It's um, yeah, of course, that's like thing number one. And 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 to require that of your fledgling business mm-hmm. is for most of. Uh, most of us re- requiring too much uh, to be unrealistic, yes. right? But, but then it's like once you once you're not in physical danger <laughs> and survival anymore, then yes, it is so much about the attachment stuff or the emotional, um, you know, maybe social trauma or whatever it may be familial. Yes. But anyway, so thank you, thank you for for kind of g- giving us that that really useful framework. Um, and, and now I, I, you know, I want to, I want to move into this other thing that we were talking about before we started recording, which was, and this is related. It's like, once things are at a bit of a stable footing, which, you know, you're, you're experiencing now in your business, Yes, there is the common uh, assumption that you have to get more, you have mm-hmm. to get bigger, you have to scale, you're not doing enough. So tell us about that especially because right now you are you know getting an advanced degree you're in school and there is kind of like these lulls of like right now you're you know you don't you don't have like full on school classes and whatever but that's going to start again soon this afternoon in a few <laughs> this, hours yes <laughs> oh my gosh okay so so tell us about that like once you're a bit of stable footing how do you how do you see what's next yeah, we were talking about that because um, <clears throat> it's an interesting thing. The flip side, I guess, perhaps, I'm just going to jam with your question of the the personality type that maybe is drawn to entrepreneurship and will, willing to take a step into the PhD program of uncertainty, maybe has a bit of a, mm, how would I describe that in uh, coherent ways? But, you know, Maybe likes excitement, likes yeah, a little fantasy. Bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Likes a little bit of risk, likes likes the changeability, right? There's yeah. the flip side of uncertainties, fear and uh, overwhelm, but it's also a bit of excitement. Yeah. When also, also uh, you know, loves autonomy. 
yes. which comes with risk because now you are your own boss. You, yes. no, one, no, no boss can take care of you. you no company yes. is taking care of you. You got to take care of yourself. Yes, yes, 100%. So, I mean, it comes from my personal experience right now and I don't have the full answer because it's sort of something I'm working through and contemplating because I've been to some degree forced into the situation by my circumstances and going, okay, what's the lesson here? So, you know, in the early days I didn't, when you and I first met, I didn't have a business. I was just starting. I was just growing, just building. And now I have one that's self-supporting and sustaining. I can live off what I earn. Yeah, I know it's very exciting. And, um, and it's just ticking along like that, you know. It's like I've got my 15 clients a week. I've got my occasional guest uh, workshops that I do and it's sort of sustaining. I'm still doing things to keep it sustaining. I still maintain my networks and I still do content and everything. But it's not that, oh, i got to work and what's going to happen and what's that next thing? And and now because, I'm, because of that um, time pressure demand from university, the idea of trying to sustain the business where it is, keep showing up for all the clients I already have, keep going what I have going, do uni, and then try and grow something new on the side, you know, the next direction just feels like it's this energy load too much for where I'm at right now. So for me personally, it's come through, I think, I think maybe if we go cosmic and the lesson here is just to, stabilize right just to hang out here and be okay with what I have and not fall prey to that no something it has to be more there has to be more there has to be something more you gotta and play I think, a bigger game Mira right <laughs> <laughs> I hate that phrase but yes go ahead please <laughs> and yeah I mean part of it you know, you and I, and if we're in the entrepreneurial or online coaching world, there's a there's different pockets of culture that are around that we're influenced by. It's also our Western capitalist mentality of limitless growth. And so, you know, I was sharing that I remember reading through your website and your kind of own journey and insights around coming from a place, like coming from a place of enoughness and then remembering that the business becomes an expression of enoughness, not a uh, desire to get our needs met, you know, to the same degree. Obviously there are needs, our security and our financial security, but not that desperate, not not the egoic needs of I'm crushing it and I'm so successful and bigger, better, level up stuff. So for me right now, and I, and I, I noticed that that's in me, you know, that I have that desire to want to look you know, get admired for the next thing that I'm doing in my business and growing and, you know, that is there. And so learning to um, be okay with enough and really be celebrating and I think I would probably recommend it, you know, in a couple of years and you and I are talking again, I'm probably going to say give yourself a year or two of like not changing anything unless you obviously need to. But if you've just got something that's working, just feel what it's like to just sit in something that's working yeah. <laughs> and feel that enoughness, Beautiful. you know? Can I, yeah. yeah. Play, instead of play a bigger game, play a deeper game. I Ooh. mean, it's like what you're it's doing. Very George I mean, Cow. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. I mean, you are essentially like, you're you're serving your clients. You, you know, you're, you be. You know, you're fulfilling this this calling you have. You are being of genuine healing and transformation to them, and you're always learning, right? From that, mm -hmm. like you, mm -hmm. you're always like, hmm, how can I, how can I serve them? How can I continue serving them well? And like you're you're creating a rhythm within your own life that is like a strong foundation for whatever does come next. But you're so right about how. In the entrepreneurial culture, it is assumed uh, that you just keep on scaling like 10x. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like, work on your 10x. Mm -hmm. What's your 10x? Come on. It's like, come on, play a deeper game, which you already are. You, you're already, you know, modeling, I think, um, that that uh, way of going about things. So I I think your clients are lucky to have you, your colleagues are lucky to have you. And uh and thank you for 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 sharing this time with us so uh for those who are interested in um working with you even though you sound like you have a pretty full load right now but 
for those interested in um, possibly diving into your content and things, what do you what do you recommend? Yeah, the usual. I'm a Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn person. You can just search my name, or I know you put the links in. Message me. Um, have a look at the videos that I make on my business page, on my personal page, on Instagram, and yeah, you can connect. I know people sometimes go into a little bit of a, a deep dive on some of the videos and the content, and that gives a bit of a sense of you know, my work as well. I love what you said, the deeper game. And I, is it okay if I just say one more thing, George, about Please. that? Yeah. Because it was making me think about this patch of time um, and like then the deeper game, it gives you opportunity to really do the mastery of craft piece, you know, in your system. And that's where my focus is now. It's like, yeah, I'm serving my clients that much better because that's where most of my attention is held for right now around, oh, I've got space. I don't need to keep trying to grow things. And and I'm like doing massive amounts of reflective practice and, and my reading is focused around really creating excellence. And when you've got excellence, the, the rest of it comes more naturally anyway and easily, right? Your reputation builds things. So anyway, I just wanted to add that in. Yeah. And yeah, that's and, that's absolutely that. Sorry, go. Yeah, don't. No. And by the way, you're in an advanced degree program. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> that too <laughs> is there. Just by, by the, the way, way. <laughs> you've got several classes that you're taking. That you're <laughs> you're creating. You know, pay, writing papers and all that stuff. I mean, yeah, I am. I genuinely admire how you do. You know, cr create the. The, the rhythm of all of this and and still show up you know and and um, energizing others so thank you thank you for your work um well i will put the links below uh including the original interview um so thank you so much mira for what you do and how you do it absolute pleasure thank you george i'll be seeing you soon yes sounds good thanks <laughs>